Hello, hello from Sweden, and welcome to Everyday Mystic, an aid to your liberation. My name is David, and I hope that you're feeling well and that you're having a good day. I myself have a little bit of a cold, if you're wondering why my voice is sounding a little funny. But I hope that this, this will work out anyway. Now, this video is essentially a reflection on being unapologetically ourselves. This does not mean resignation, but this means to, at this moment, accepting ourselves just the way that we are. Even though we are works in progress, we are also perfect manifestations of God. A little bit paradoxically, but I hope that I will make this clearer as we move along. So, you are here to be unique, you are not here to be a copy. You are more than the sum total of your friends and your role models, even if who you admire can tell you something about who you are. Now, I want to begin by giving you a little brief overview of the ideas of Vadim Zeeland. So Vadim Zeeland is at least purportedly a quantum physicist from, from Russia that wrote the book Reality Transurfing. And what is relevant for this discussion is that he paints a picture of a hidden structure of reality and more specifically there are these living energy structures that are called pendulums. And these pendulums are created by our thoughts and by the emotion that we feed in our, into our thoughts. Now take a little step back and think about how this works because this applies to your own experience of reality. Look at how your mind functions. You do have all of these thought patterns that go around inside of your head. Sometimes an emotion is triggered by an experience. This emotion in turn feeds into the thought patterns, which creates a certain type of behavior that is again driven by the emotions that you act out into the world. And then you create the same experiences in accordance with your pre-programmed thought patterns. So let's say that there are these energy structures that actually want to keep you in this state, that actually feeds on these states. You have to take this into account then, and what I can say is that I don't know exactly if this is how it works. And Vadim Zeeland actually says that you don't have to believe everything that I say either. Just look at it and see if it is applicable to, to your own experience. And what I can say for sure is that there is a hidden structure to reality. Everything is not just cause and effect. And on a quantum level, this I think that quantum physicists are in agreement of as opposed to many other things that they are not so much in agreement of, that on the quantum level everything is not just causality. A particle can be at two places at the same time, and two particles can affect each other without being in direct contact with each other. And I actually think that this is where somehow the key to freedom lies, because this is a level of reality that is not determined by just cause and effect. Because it's very difficult to get away from the argument of determinism when you approach life strictly from the idea of cause and effect. Now, these pendulums for one reason or another, because people are more easy to control that way, they are more predictable, they want to keep people as copies. So if you want to break free from this structure and actually become free for real, you need to embrace your authentic self. Now this is not easy. 
and I will try to give you some hints of how you actually can approach this. But you have to look at it from your own point of view. Because we have these different layers of identity you could say from the lowest to the highest. And as I said, at the absolute highest level we are individual expressions of pure infinite love, pure infinite consciousness, pure infinite intelligence, which is in other words God. And this human experience, and this is what you will actually learn as you progress on your spiritual awakening, is actually God's pure infinite consciousness expressing itself individually. There is a paradox here, because at the absolute essence then all is one and there is no difference between anything, but on this individual le level, as we are experiencing life right here, right now, there are things that matter when it comes to individuality. We have a keen sense that it is better to be an individual than being a copy, authenticity is better than inauthenticity. But now let's look at the layers of identification where we can build an identity through things that are not really us. The lower parts of this is our possessions, our job, the numbers we have on our bank accounts etc. And you know that there are a lot of people that actually build an identity through this. They feel that if they lose something of this, they have also lost something of themselves. They might not think this consciously, but it is very clear that this is how they operate in the world. Another level is that, is that you identify yourself with how you act in relation to others, what you do for others, your place in the world, etc. This is also not you, but I would say that it is a little higher level from this very materialist perspective. So, the lowest level that I can think of is identification with our instincts, our material belongings, etc. But then we can climb higher as with, for example, identification with our social mask, our persona, our ego, etc. Then the ego and the persona are not the same thing because the ego is our self-perception and the persona is our social mask that we project out into the world. But many people are not conscious of this at all. They think that they are their social mask. They think that there are the thoughts about themselves. So none of this is really real. But you also have these little quirks that seem to be more a part of yourself than other things. And when it comes to a lot of things in this actually, your quirks might be your greatest asset. You might try to get away from your shyness, from your social awkwardness, but these might actually be part of yourself that can be refined into something truly unique, something truly individual. Think about this for a little bit. If your weaknesses can be turned in, into strengths, or if your weaknesses are really truly just weaknesses that needs to be worked on so that you can let go of them. This is something that you have to figure out for yourself. But for example, if you have this weakness to go after instant gratification, momentary pleasures that don't have any real meaning to them, I would say that this is a weakness that while you shouldn't judge yourself for it, you need to do your best to let go of it. I know that it's not easy, but my point is think about if a weakness is really a weakness or if it is really something that can be turned into something authentic and therefore become a strength when you try to 
aspire to the things that you feel called to aspire to. So, in one area you are free to be who you, whoever you want to be. But you also know that some choices build you up and others destroy. Some feel more true and some are just parts of the ego. And you also have to ex actually when you start to wake up. You have to be very careful with the spiritual ego in the, all of this. Because the spiritual ego and you can discover this in yourself and there is no judgment. I still even have a ordinary ego and I most definitely have a spiritual ego. But if you find yourself being frustrated and condescending over, over other people's lack of spirituality, over other people's way of interacting with the world that you feel is lower than yourself, because as I said, everything is ultimately expressions of, of infinite consciousness, and there is no really built-in meaning to any of this. But if you find yourself attaching a lot of negative labels to other people because you find them lower than yourself because you've started to wake up then this is a clear expression of the spiritual ego now with that being said what can you do when you start to realize that in order to truly be free you need to start expressing, your, expressing yourself in a conscious manner that is not defined by society, that is not defined by your peer group, and that is not defined by your role models, even if all of this, except society I would say, but the rest of it can help you to understand who you are better. Now, as I said, the first step is to accept yourself totally. It's not about resignation. It's about seeing that this is who I am and the things that you believe are weaknesses are not necessarily weaknesses at all. And get you to know yourself a little bit. Understand why you feel drawn to certain things because if you do feel drawn to certain things there is a good indication that there is something in it that you have to pursue. But also be very clear about this. Just because something is catching your attention, this, there is probably a lot of refinement when it comes to this. I can honestly say that I've been interested and drawn to the darker aspects of of humanity you could say, whether it is through fiction or through understanding the darker aspects of, of the human experience. But for me it has been very important to be cautious against morbid fascination. To me it has been very important to understand that the good aspects of this is to actually try to understand people that come from a very dark place. To actually try to understand the darkness so that it can be transformed into light. And I'm in no way perfect at this at all actually. I have a long way to go with this and a lot of self-reflection left to do when it comes to this. But I wanted to bring this up as a good example of something that might on the surface seem to be totally something bad. But when you scratch the surface that can actually be a good reason why it is there. So, get to know yourself. Get to know your little quirks and see, as I said before, whether they can actually be turned into something good or if they are of the kind that are only bringing you down. So therefore, and this is the alchemical process, you refine the lead to turn it into gold, some things need to just be cleaned out, while others need to be transformed. And become integrated. Look at the different aspects of yourself, 
get to know a little bit about archetypes and see how archetypes are fitting into your experience. I've for a long time been interested in the trickster archetype for example. So this is for me a key to who I am authentically meant to be. Again, at the absolute core we are infinite consciousness. But right here, right now, these things seem to matter somehow. Also understand your emotions. Many of us in our interactions with the world have become very numb to our emotions. We haven't given them much thought because our society is so geared towards keeping us trapped into the thought machine up inside of our heads. But our emotions are at least and even more so I would say valid when it comes to understanding who we are and how we are functioning in the world. So the more we can understand what our emotions are telling us about ourselves and our experience, the more integrated we will also become as individuals. So, with that being said, let your freak flag fly, but do it consciously. You do not want to become a person that is totally unaware of just how weird you really are while you walk around thinking that you're totally normal. But don't care about other people's opinions either. Other people's opinions are one of the greatest prisons for our minds, or one of the greatest prisons for our souls. We get so caught up in what other people think of us that we have no chance of becoming unique individuals at all. In one sense it could be good to of course look at how our peer groups react to how we behave because this can help us understand ourselves better and understand what kind of behavior is acceptable and not. But this goes into the area of values, of morals, etc. It's not because we should put a wet blanket on our little quirks. No, instead, refine your little quirks and let go of what anyone else thinks of you. Try to understand the world and your experience as clearly as possible without these little filters that other people put on them. Because most people, if you think about it, are insane. Most people think that this reality, this physical 3D experience, is more or less the only real reality while you are actually waking up to that there are many different layers to reality. You are waking up to that this little physical 3D experience is just one little tiny, tiny blip on the whole bandwidth of existence. Therefore, you cannot trust other people's opinions of things. I know for example when I started this YouTube channel that there on the one hand will be a lot of people that don't like at all that I talk about these esoteric subjects and on the other there will be people that don't like that I talk about a personal relationship with God because these things are for one reason or another very much tainted by certain beliefs and ideas about this. And I also know that if there are people that I know from my past that see my videos, they will think that I'm a little weird maybe. But when you start to realize that the truth of existence is so much grander than we've been led to believe, you should also be able to, even if it doesn't come immediately, discard the insanity that most people live under. And that's it for today. 
If you like this video, leave a like, leave a comment and share the video on social media and other places. All of it helps the channel to grow. And if you haven't done it already, subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell so YouTube always notifies you of new videos. And check out the description and the comment section for other things that me and my wife are doing. And other than that, just sincerely thank you for your time.